All right, we're live. Uh, okay, video editor, please edit out anything that is not the beginning of the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, the real presentation. I guess I've already introduced it, so let's just get into it. Okay, so, um, geez, what? Like that? And like that. Okay, awesome. So, the, uh, this is just like an intro PowerPoint to put you on the same page, and then it's going to be a live demo, because I, I don't really like PowerPoints. So, but, I, but it was nece necessary. So, okay. Um, as, we've, as we've somewhat gone over, I guess I've deflated my little, my little build-up a little bit here, but that's all right. Do you want to fill out, like, this guy here, that's an that's a editable PDF, or something like this, a sleek-looking website? Form. Okay, that's the correct answer. <laughs> if you like the first one, you might be in the wrong presentation. Okay, so what PhilPDF does is help you turn a such a web form submission into a filled PDF with little, you know, it's the same PDF as we saw before. It's got this stuff in it now. You can't edit the fields anymore. You notice they're not blue. Um, and like this is a little thing showing how it went in there. And it's the same format as the other one was, other than having the data in it. And new, you can email it as an attachment. Although it requires some setup, but you can do it, which is really the, which is the coolest part. <laughs> because before you couldn't actually do it at all. So, all right. Okay, now we get into the live demo. So, let's start with... This little form that, what, what just happened? Why did it do that? It didn't even do anything. Why did it, I didn't turn on mirroring or anything. Okay. Well, I got the intro done at least. <laughs> it lasted for that. <laughs> no, come on. Now you saw what it does. You know, we're, just <laughs> getting, we're getting there gradually. What did I do? Look, it keeps going to that. Do you have anything running that's affecting the display? Because it's running at a different hertz and... Yeah, I think it's called Mac OS X. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me, I mean, let me... Turn off anything that's affecting any display. Jeez. Nothing that is... I mean, I'm recording. I don't know. No, no, that's that's fine. Recording um, Background I, stuff? This? Any of this? Uh, me just me, yeah, let's just close stuff. Whatever. I just want to be able to... Sorry. It's not going to kill me. Oh, we've rebooted twice. So. Rebooted the projector. No, no, oh, you even have a different projector. Yeah, it's a different well, one. We know it works. So, uh, no one good. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah this one. Come on, projector gods. <laughs> oh, like, just as tense. All right. We already applauded it for it, so we don't have to do it again. Okay. okay. <laughs> I better show you this before it goes out again. So, um, this is the. Oh, it, oh okay. I gotta start. My, sorry, I gotta start my VM again because I suspended it when we restarted. Um, this won't take long. It starts in like two seconds. Uh, sites, presentations, full PDF, vagrant. Oh. He heard the vagrant. The tech people are like, yes. I showed someone that this morning, and they were like, wow, thank you. Anyway. Um, oh, I bet you. Okay, and then I'll just kind of move the window over manually because I tried using a better better snap pane or whatever sh shortcut before and I think that's when the projector kicked out so I'm going to avoid that okay so this is a little web form I set up uh, kind of trying to mimic something realistic buyer information form for real estate I just looked one up and kind of copied it uh, in a creative sort of way and uh, it has a corresponding PDF, which looks something like this. Uh, 
thinks that's... It's the one you saw in the, you know, it's the same one that you saw in the presentation for, for sake of a consistency and whatnot. Okay, and so, all right, so, uh, I've already filled this out before, so I, I think you know how to fill out a web form. So let's look at a couple ways in which we, like how we actually get it there. So for convenience, I've set up a view in advance that already has links to, to trigger fill PDF. Because the way that you trigger it is with a link. And as counterintuitive as this seems, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you actually start, how you, how you trigger the PDF downloading process. So you can just redirect them to the page when they you know, submit something and then it just starts. It'll send a download. You know, you're not, it's, it's like views or rules or whatever, you know, you have that flexibility, so you have to use the flexibility to get it going. But it's not too bad. It's just, it's a link with a few, with, with like one question mark and some ampersands in it. And it's documented. So just look at the documentation and there are examples of how to do it. And you can just copy, paste, change, and set up. So, um, let's do one of these. This is the one that when I click it, it'll download it. And then so it tells me to download it. And then if we look at that, then it's what I had filled out in that submission there. And you see, like, option buttons and checkboxes work as well, which is, which is nice. Um, and so that's kind of what the user experiences. So let's look a little bit at how this kind of thing is actually set up in the background. Where is that? Okay. Let me refresh these pages. So you have your, I mean, when you, when you first install the module, that's, that's good to go over. There's only a few settings. Um, there's a few ways you can get it to work. You can um, install one of two things on your server, documented how to do this, or you can use Phil PDF service. That's that logo that was in the demo site there. You can probably look that up pretty easily. And if you use it, you just put in an API key, and whether you want to use HTTPS, you do, or not, and, uh, and away you go. So then you go to this page here, and you upload your PDF. And then so when you upload it, you come to one like this that reads the fields in it and then lets you set it up. So you see all these like things between square brackets here. You might recognize them as tokens if you've used tokens before. Uh, and they just, they're like kind of field names and it tells it what field or what value you want to use for that, for that specific PDF key. So in my PDF, the field is named city, and I'm saying, okay, well, I want to put the, you know, the city field on my web form into the city field on my PDF, and so on. And something that I, that I got worked out, I don't know, like last week, that is pretty cool is that you can actually tell it which, which like, option in a select on a web form you want to correspond to an option, on a, an option button on a PDF, because there were some problems with that. You don't really want to see the old way of doing this. It was possible, but you, uh, okay, well, I'll tell you the old way of doing it. <laughs> um, okay, so if we go to edit a particular field, and at the same time, we can look at the field edit page. You know, you see, you can give it a label if you can't remember what it is, if it's named something really confusing like lifecycle PDFs tend to do, like form one dot subform one dot control one, two, three, four, five. You can just label it like city or whatever. And, um, so you can create the token? The tokens are provided by Webform Tokens and by Token itself, uh, and you can see which ones are available here. And you can get, you can access quite a few because in Drupal 7, at least in Drupal 7, because in Drupal 7 you can like, you know, okay, so we have a node, but then we have the author of the node, and then you have all these user tokens for that author. And somebody actually solved their like, how do I get profile 2 information into my PDF? And I'm like, can you use a node author and chain it? And they're like, that worked. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, uses only, it uses either node tokens or web form tokens, and I'll try to hide the rest of those at some point. Just ignore them for now. Um, web form tokens is a separate module you can add if you need it, and this, this one will recognize that. 
And uh, if, you, if you use Webform rules, there's a patch that makes it not break Webform tokens, so make sure you apply that if, if you do. Otherwise, it will break Webform tokens. Okay, so, um, so you, I mean, you, these, this is pretty straightforward, documented again. You can just click here, and then you click here, and it'll populate the token. You get that for free because of the token module and it, it providing all of that. And um, for option buttons, I can give you a hint as to what used to have to be done. You can see that I'm doing this. There's this thing here called transform values on this field. And this is because of we're, we're, we're like trying to put a, one, you know, a thing from one system into a thing from another system that has different expectations sometimes. And you can't make the systems the same. In other words, uh, my checkbox wants me to say yes if I want it to be checked. But Drupal would like to store that value as garage. So how do I tell it garage means yes? That, that's how you tell it. Garage means yes. And you can put as many of these as you want. And it's just a one-to-one -one replace. So if, you, if it reads garage from, from the token that I put up there, let's actually read that a little slower and see what it is. Okay, so web form. Okay, so I'm saying that I want the select option who's a... I'm saying select key. That means the, the computer name of it, the computer readable one, which is just lowercase garage. Uh, of, this, of this field, select the criteria you're after. That's a web form field. I want, I, want, I want that value to go into the PDF. And then in this case, it's saying, okay, if that value that I just set up there, that big long thing, is yes, then please... Is, is garage, then please send yes instead to the PDF and not garage so the box gets checked. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll quickly see the need for that if you use radio buttons or, or check boxes. And that's kind of where that came from. What I was doing before, before I had this, like, give me the value of a specific option on a web form, was um, <laughs> I was using chain tokens. And so, like, I would... Ex um, okay, so there are different kinds of tokens. One of them is called an array. And this is like when, really it's a PHP array for people who know what that is. For people who don't, it just means that you have several values in one place, like in one field. Um, this kind of thing, it's just a single value, garage. And it's blank or it's garage. But you can also have multiple value fields that in one sort of place you have several values. And so with token, you can go into those and like, you know, put them all together separated by a comma, for example, and that's what I was doing. I was getting every possible combination that, would, that meant that this box should be checked and replacing it with yes. So this is a lot easier. <laughs> there were like 16 rows in there sometimes. So that's why I was motivated to fix that. One per line, yeah. It, it tells you down here, like, how it works. Okay, so... That is essentially how you set it up. Let's look at some of the other options and features on this page. Um, you can save. OK, so here you can see I'm actually looking at, this is not the PDF that I just used, or the PDF configuration that I just used. This is the one I'm about to show you. And in this one, it doesn't download the PDF. It saves it to a file path instead. So you could just save it to a configurable path underneath site's default files or whatever your public file path is on your server, um, and which it could be good if you're like selling the PDF or something, and you don't want people to have it as soon as they filled in the data, you know, pay now and get your PDF. People do this, so. <laughs> or I mean, I, I mean, you may have seen a lot of books that actually do put your name on like every page of the book, so you could, you could do that with this. Um, well, it, it renders it either way, but it either sends it to you to download or it saves that on the server as a file. I'll show you. Okay, and then you can use tokens for the file path. So, like, you, you can, you probably can't read it, but it says web form meta SID, meaning the submission ID. So, like, there will be a folder called 15, a folder called 16, and so on. And then I can, I can say, like, oh, okay, well, you know, this submission resulted in this PDF, and I can actually locate it. Uh, there's one, something called redirect directly to PDF, 
which means that it'll take the browser to the PDF that was saved as a file versus just going to the home page or wherever you told it to go after saving it. And uh, this one's supposed to do that, but it's not doing it. Uh, so just imagine that it, that like when you click a PDF on a site and it opens a PDF, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, maybe I just messed up somehow, so sorry about that. Okay, so that's pretty much the options. You can, you can download a sample as well. That'll just put the whatever, it'll put the field names of the PDF fields into the PDF fields. So you can see that it, like where they're going to go and how they're going to look. It's useful. You can see what font, if you set your fonts and stuff in, in Adobe Acrobat, it'll, or, or other tool that you can use. You can use OpenOffice. In fact, if you do OpenOffice form fields and export it, it'll work. It's really crazy. I didn't believe someone who told me that, but well, I, I was forced to believe it. Um, and I imagine other PDF creation tools. I know LiveCycle works, um, and live, you have to use LiveCycle if you want to stamp images onto the PDFs. Because I was only able to get it work with, a, with to work with a LiveCycle image field, and LiveCycle is, lim, is Windows only. I discovered upon getting a Mac, which sucks. So I'm probably going to try to solve that one again. But right now, you, if you want to do it, that's how you have to do it. And if you're spamming images onto PDFs, hopefully you work for like some big company that can afford lifecycle on Windows. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's the bad news. And let's look at the good news, which is that it works unless you do a lot of things. Okay. So um, going back to our little, going back to our little. Where is it? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it seems like we went back in time to when I hadn't refreshed this page. Somehow. So, all right. Now we're back to the future. Okay, so as you see, this is a very similar view, except it has to file on it, which is because when I click it, it's going to very ingloriously refresh, just go back. The link here, which is, I guess, not showing up, it must be cut off at the bottom of the screen. Let's see if I can copy it show it to you in the okay this is this is I, I did it the really complex way in views I could have made it simpler but you see I have this destination thing and I'm telling it where to go after it after it does the file if you don't tell it where to go it'll go to the home page and when you check redirect to PDF um, it's supposed to go to the PDF but I believe that destination yeah, I made it so destination it actually overrides the redirect to PDF so that's probably why that wasn't working for me um, and, it's, and that's documented in the little, in the option there, so in case you forget, like I did, because I didn't read. So you should read, unlike me, who's presenting this. Um, but anyway, the meat of the story is that if we, <clears throat> if we go to uh, the finder in, in the directory that it should be going to, you see that this buyer information forms has appeared which, if you read what I had configured the path to be, you may remember that. If not, just take my word on it. Um, and then 15, which, which I did explain, the submission ID. That's what that one was. And then you have a PDF in there, which, upon opening, is much like the one that we saw before. In fact, it's the exact same thing. It's just saved in a different location with some checkboxes checked and option button working and so on. So that's another way to get the PDFs out. Um, and that's essentially how that works. Um, did I answer your question, by the way, along the way, about what it means to save it to a file and all that? Right. By de the default, if you don't set that up, is to download it to the browser, to send it to the browser to download. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, uh, oh, oh, we're forgetting the most important part, which is, I want to see the email attachment. Okay, let's show you the email attachment. Yeah, I'll show you a little bit about how that was set up as well, but first let's just do it. So I have a throwaway email here at that mail, and I should have a bunch of emails. I don't have a bunch of emails. There's probably a reason for that. Um, let's look at the rule and find out when, and I can do it under the guise that I'm just showing you how it works. Okay, so... Um, let's go to, so you go to rules. You have to install rules for this to work. 
it provides a default rule um, that you can turn on and customize, and you have to customize it. Uh, if you turn on, you need web form, web form rules, and mind mail, and rules. And, and then this will appear. You can see I've already set it up. So let's look at this. Basically, Phil PDF ha itself has some rules integration to make this whole deal work. So it's using web form rules. When I submit the web form, then I want to say, is this the web form that I'm interested in, which was number three? And this web form rules thing, which uh, I, I, I suppose I needed. And then uh, massaging data in rules. This is what most of what this is. I'm just saying, like, OK, I want. Because you can do multiple like submissions, you can tell it multiple ones, and it'll use the the latest populated value that it finds. I don't know. I, don't, I still don't understand why people would want to use multiple submissions, but they can, so it works. So, um, so then I'm just doing that. I'm just telling it, uh, you know, which submission and do I want to do? I'm changing it or something. And then converting the data type, because rules is really particular about the data types. And you can't access certain things unless it's the same data type, which, which confused me. And I needed the development version of rules to convert data type, just so you know. So get the development version if you want to use this feature. Uh, add an item to list, blah, blah, blah. OK, the meat of it, load a fill PDF configuration. So it brings in all the settings from one of those things on that screen that we were looking at before. Oops. Like this screen, this is a fill PDF configuration. And then this load a fill PDF configuration basically sort of sucks that into a, into a variable so that other things can work. OK, and you fill a PDF with web form data. That's pretty understandable. And then save. See, what that does is it, it creates the PDF in just a rules variable. And then, when you act, and then you can decide what to do with it. So you have that filled PDF. OK, I want to save it to a file. In that case, I'm telling it. And then I want to add a variable, which is the, uh, the email address of the person who submitted the web form. And then I want, to, I want to send an email to them. And so this is where it's really cool. So then I can just pick it with the little fancy rules data selector thing. They just pick the submitter email. You know, can set a subject, like copy a completed PDF for your records. Thank you for filling out the form and the body. And then I can tell it an attachment. And then so this whole big thing, you know, I give it the file path to the attachment. That's what all that was for. And and it works. So maybe I got the email address wrong on that one. Let's see what I had in there. Oops. Save. Go back to the form. I'd really like you to see that. They deleted all my tests from uh, from like a week ago because it's a temporary email account. Go figure. Uh oh. Uh, I'll postpone it and then fix it. So okay, it fixes that. All right. So let's see. It should be fill PDF testing. Doug mail that form. Why don't we go into questions and then kind of tinker along? Yeah. So well, you would on the web form side, you would just use like a multi-page web form or something, where 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 the fields aren't all required, and then um, once it's done, you generate the PDF. Well, you could just regenerate it with all the data. Yeah, if it's a node, you could do that as well. I mean, the main thing is like you want. Okay. Oh, you. What you could do is um, it's documented how to do this. You could turn off the flattening of the fields so that it fills in a few of them, and you can just open it up as a normal PDF and type in the rest later. So that's what you would want to do in that case. If you wanted to finish it in PDF land. 
Yeah. It's like when you when you pass multiple submission IDs to it, like to fill it with multiple submissions, and as far as I can see, it just takes the last one in the list and uses that. So I'm sure there was some sort of accommodation or reason that this was done, but and that it was broken at some point and then fixed, but I don't understand that use case very well myself. Oh yeah, I guess I guess so. Oh yeah, I guess that might be another thing to look at too. He's saying you have several like submissions of different parts of the data, and then you put them all together and tell it to use that. Yeah. Like two different nodes? Well, multiple users can generate it. Is that what you mean? Like, what about the, like, what if you have like a vacation request that the employee fills out and has to go to their manager to approve it, and you want a single PDF that shows Employee request the vacation and then with the manager's approval on one final form to save for, for record keeping. Mm. I, think I mean, I think you would do that in Drupal. You would have you would once it was approved, then you would generate the PDF. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean you could you should you should be able to do stuff like that except um Fields. Yeah, I don't. I don't check field access that rigorously. So when they filled, and which in this case would be good, because then they could just fill in everything, <laughs> and then the manager who could access some fields could do the rest. But I mean, usually you solve, you can solve a lot of that just through workflow. Which if they're both using Drupal anyway, then you can just get them to do it in Drupal, and then when you're done, just once it's approved, print it out at that point. Yeah, so probably what happened is there's, there's probably, probably, I bet like port 25 is blocked on the network here, and so it can't send the email. That's probably what's happening. So let me see if it tried to send the email. So it probably tell me. Uh, just realized I, oh, actually I do know how to check this. Uh, where is that? Here, so go in here, and this will only take a second. Look at the system log, and isn't that where it fails? Okay. Yeah, it's it, it 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 the email. It tried to send the email. It just can't. <laughs> so yeah, that that was today. It tried to send it to the wrong person, but it did try to send an email. And oh wait, oh, oh, oh. Okay, well let's 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 look at that. Maybe maybe there maybe there is a way to get this to work. One last thing. It looked like it was trying to send it to the to the site user, but I have a feeling maybe that's an outdated message because I already changed that. I thought. I was trying to send it to admin at example. No, he already changed it. Whatever. You'll have to try that one. I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. <laughs> um, you would fill it out, and then they would have to digitally sign the result. Yeah, I mean... It doesn't have that feature now. If 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 any uh, if any contributions of that feature come, I will be willing to accept them. Yeah, maybe you can send me that. I could see what they're see what they're doing. 
Um, I have to pretty much wrap up. Um, I'm already over the time in which I was supposed to stop. So um, let me let me flash let me let me let me flash this in front of you. This is a this is the Phil PDF service site. Um, it's one of those options if you don't want to install stuff on your server. Um, it has a link to the demo here, which basically just shows you what I showed you. So you don't really have to use the demo anymore. You just got a better one. Uh, it has plans based on number of fills that you're going to do per month. You can read about that. Um, if you want, like, uh, it's in the PowerPoint. Let's look. Where's the PowerPoint? Questions and answers. Okay. okay. If you want 10% off, email me if, you, if you're thinking of subscribing to this thing. I used to have a coupon, but nobody actually used the coupon, so... <laughs> Um, it's their prices are on the site. It's, right now it's twelve for like a thousand a month and thirty nine for for unlimited. <laughs> meaning like meaning like if, you, if you're doing more than fifty thousand, I'm probably going to contact you and be like, let's work something out. But yeah, it's basically unlimited. Nobody's doing fifty thousand. Yeah. Was there one more question? I saw a hand that a face that I can't see. Oh, he has an answer. <coughs> The, um, the real estate industry and uh, banks, they use uh, DocuSign to, uh, to resolve assignments. Ah. All right. It's a, it's a web yeah, yeah, DocuSign. Well, I've heard of DocuSign. I probably used it myself for some things. Okay. Cool. Um, I have cards if anyone wants to get one from me. But other than that, thank you for coming. This is the largest audience I've ever had for this, so I'm really happy. <laughs> and for putting up with all the technical issues. Okay. Thank you. I have more. Yeah, I you Which one? Which one's loose? Yeah, I'll take one. Yeah. Wait, didn't I just say? Oh, no, we were just sitting. Yeah. Yeah, it actually was more interesting. Had to, I had to adapt. But it was, it was, it was good at adaptation. I mean, it, it spurred some interesting conversation that was almost in some ways it was better than the presentation maybe warm up warm up warm the room up <laughs> cool so okay he gave me instructions when done press stop